There's an iconic scene at the start of the 2001 romantic comedy Bridget Jones' Diary, when the main character, Bridget, played by Renee Zellweger, meets the character Mark Darcy, played by Colin Firth, at her parents' New Year's party. Bridget wonders if Mr. Darcy may be her Mr. Right. However, when he turns around to reveal what he's wearing, a tacky green Christmas sweater with a goofy red-nosed reindeer on it, Bridget is immediately turned off and becomes totally unimpressed. This scene basically demonstrates the general perception of decorative Christmas sweaters at the time. They're ugly, unfashionable, and in many instances, outright cringy. And in the 90s and early 2000s, if you got someone an ornate or extravagant Christmas sweater, you either don't like them very much or it's meant to be a gag gift. However, over the years, ugly Christmas sweaters have become a gift and holiday attire people genuinely love and actually want to wear. How did this happen and why do so many people find ugly actually appealing? It's pretty difficult to pinpoint when precisely Christmas sweaters were invented. They most likely have existed as long as sweaters and Christmas have been around. But pop culturally, Christmas-themed sweaters started showing up around the 1950s when some TV personalities and celebrities started wearing them during Christmas TV specials. But they didn't really become trendy until the 80s and 90s when Christmas sweaters were popularized by TV and movie characters like Clark Griswold in National Lamp Poon's Christmas Vacation. However, most of the time, the characters wearing these sweaters were portrayed as uncool or ridiculous, and choosing to wear a garish Christmas sweater is obviously a sign of bad taste. But in the last couple of decades, Christmas sweaters have evolved into a tradition that many people actually enjoy. Wearing an ugly sweater to a Christmas party became almost an ubiquitous thing to do. Many people now flock to vintage or used clothing shops like Salvation Army to buy them during the holidays. The charity Save the Children have also been holding a fundraiser called Christmas Jumper Day in the UK every December since 2012, where people are encouraged to partake by donating to the charity and wearing a Christmas jumper. Apparently that's what sweaters are called over there. And it's not just common folk who enjoy this tradition. Famous fashion designers and high fashion retailers have been putting out ugly Christmas sweater lines out on the runway and in stores for years. It's still regularly featured featured in popular contemporary TV shows, and many celebrities like late night talk show hosts Jimmy Fallon have also embraced the trend. Even musicians like the metal band Slayer released a Christmas sweater as a part of their merchandise back in 2012, and the NBA's official merch store also sells a collection of ugly NBA holiday sweaters. Of course, fashion trends are cyclical, and many designs go in and out of style all the time. But the primary reason Christmas sweaters are trendy is because they seem outdated and not not fashionable. In fact, the uglier and flashier, the better. It may seem kind of odd for so many people to love overtly ugly things, but it's actually kind of a common thing, and there's a pretty good explanation for this. In visual art and design, there's a term called kitsch, which according to the Oxford English Dictionary is defined as art, objects, or design considered to be in poor taste because of excessive garishness or sentimentality, but sometimes appreciated in an ironic or knowing way. And in general, what's considered kitsch is usually seen as lacking in style or sophistication. Pop art like Andy Warhol's soup cans and Yayoi Kusama's polka dot designs are sometimes considered a form of kitsch art. Certain postmodern architectural designs that are overly ornamental, such as works by the architect Michael Graves, are sometimes called kitsch architecture. In performance art, there is a related term called camp, which is usually defined as a performance style that's ostentatious, over-the-top, and intentionally cheesy. Camp has also often been associated with gay and drag culture, but it's not limited to that. An example of camp is the performance style and visual presentation of David Bowie, who often wore exaggerated costumes and put on dramatic performances, such as in his alter ego, Ziggy Stardust. A few years ago, I made a video about modern architecture where I mentioned the book Learning from Las Vegas by Denise Scott Brown and Robert Venturi, where they demonstrated how decorative details, imagery 
history that reflect pop culture and ornamentation that contain historic references are important elements that communicate meaningful context and help us make symbolic connections. Las Vegas may be an eclectic collection of flashy and extravagant signs, and Disneyland may be a representation of tacky and heavily commercialized products, but the reason people enjoy them is because they represent the richness and complexities of life in ways that sleek modernism and simple streamlined designs can't. So why do people love ugly Christmas sweaters? Well, they're warm, fuzzy, endearing, and wholesome. But also, a festively and symbolically adorned Christmas or holiday sweater can evoke cherished childhood memories. They have cross-generational appeal and can create meaningful bonds between family, friends, and even total strangers. They also connect us to others around the world and throughout history who share similar cultures and traditions. And they don't have to be Christmas or even winter holiday traditions. For the past few years, Microsoft has also been selling ugly Christmas sweaters for charity. Past designs have been in the styles of Windows 95, XP, and MS Paint. They're pretty ugly, but are usually so popular they sell out very quickly. This year for 2021, they released an ugly sweater in the style of classic Minesweeper. It sold out after the first day. Here are some ugly holiday sweater designs that I enjoy. So do you like ugly Christmas or holiday sweaters? If so, what are some of your favorite designs? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching. If you're interested in more content about kitsch art, you can check out episode 38 of my podcast, Pictorial, where my co-host Quinn and I talk about a related underground art movement called lowbrow art. If you want to check out some more articulations episodes, here are some of my suggestions. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon so you don't miss new episodes. Hope you guys have a Merry Christmas, a great holiday season, and Happy New Year. Past designs have been in the styles of Windows 95. Oh my god! <laughs>